Gregor, look, I think it, it, it might be really important just to take our shareholders through who is behind Gregor Borg, what your experience is that has ended up with you being a, a professor at Halle, and uh, you know, just give our shareholders a bit of color on your experience and how you actually got to where you are at the at the moment, being able to synthesize all this uh, detail and and simplify things for us. Well, um, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to talk about myself a little bit, which is not so easy because <laughs> we're talking about something like forty years of experience. And my entire career, I've been sort of hopping back and forth from industry to academia, or actually been standing with one leg on the one side and the other leg on the other side. But uh, although I've been working on very many different deposit types all over the world, what has kept being one of my strong topics are sediment hosted base metal, precious metal deposits. So my second exploration job that I actually worked in was in Germany and I was trying to explore for a company more reserves for two of the most outstanding sediment hosted base metal deposits. The one is the deposit of Megan and the other one the deposit of Rummelsburg. But right from the beginning I had to learn that there is a danger in pigeonholing these deposits because if people talk about sediment hosts at lead zinc, which is a topic and which is one of the memes, one is overlooking that quite a large number of these basins are not just sedimentary basins, but they are volcano sedimentary basins. And the biggest difference that that makes is that the volcano sedimentary basins also have a very, very significant and economically important endowment in copper, in copper and gold, and so one gets this very, very nice mixture of the source rocks that come from the clastic sedimentary side, which bring us the lead and the zinc, and from the volcanic side that bring us copper, zinc, but also gold and silver. So that is quite an amazing endowment. And this is what I've come across, whether I worked in the European Kupferschiefer, or whether I worked in North America in some of the sediment hosted deposits in the Kiwino Rift, whether it was in Ecuador or whether it was in coastal Namibia. So that is one of the things and one of the lessons that I learned pretty early on that one must be careful not to discard a certain deposit type just because it doesn't give the abbreviation of a certain element in there. But one must always look at the basin we're dealing with and at the Kutuku Basin in Ecuador in Orania's exploration area. Certainly, you cannot overlook the potential for copper which sticks out of the ground as malachite, very, very clear to see. So Gregor, yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind talking a, a bit more about the, the Katuku Basin that, that we're exploring. Um, and, you know, just uh, we, we're always talking to our shareholders about the fact that you need three fundamental things to form an ore deposit. Firstly, you need the, the source of the metals. Secondly, you need the plumbing system or, or the means of getting those metal bearing fluids moving around. And then thirdly, crucially, you need some sort of trap site uh, that allows all of those metals to be pulled out of that solution uh, in enough concentration to, to form a, a high grade uh, deposit. So, you know, and, and all of those things are happening within the basin. Would you mind just sort of stepping us through how that all works from, from your observations from, from the Kutuku? Well, thank you, Richard. That's, that's a very, very good point that you're raising there and that you're sort of trimming it down to the most fundamental, to the most three most fundamental features that you actually need. The source, conduits or media that transport and trap sites. That is sort of the key ingredients for the formation of any ore deposit. You're perfectly right. If one looks at these categories in detail, there are sort of subcategories and not because I want to fill in a big tick box exercise form here, but it is so important to point out that all of these ingredients in detail, they're all present in your exploration area. So if we are talking about sources, we're talking about sources, and I've briefly touched on that already. It's a basin that is filled, it's a fault bounded basin, first of all, graben type fault bounded basins, which will become quite important to just now, which is filled with 
volcano sedimentary material. So we've got mafic volcanics. There are some intermediate volcanics, which are very, very good source rocks for metals. We've got the clastic sediments, which are also very good source for rocks for metals. And we do have evaporites. We've got anhydrite and gypsum, which are sulfate minerals, which is important because sulfur will be needed in the end to produce sulfides or minerals. But it's also important for leaching because it is producing acidic acids, acidic fluids that can leach metals from the rock. They can do terrible things to the rocks, but they release the metals from those and change and alter them. And there's also another ingredient that we've got there. We've got salt, we've got sodium chloride, potassium chloride, we've got salt in the form of layers of cushions that have warped and of domes. And this is another amazing chemical in there because if we take apart the sodium chloride and we take the chloride, the chlorine in there, the chlorine is what we call a very, very good complexing agent. That means if we've got chlorine in those waters, in those warm waters in the basin, in the pores, those again can leach, store and transport the metals in an amazing way. That means different from distilled water, sulfur bearing fluids, which have a low pH, they are acidic and chlorine bearing fluids have such an amazing capability of releasing the metals, transporting them to the right sides. So not only that our fluids are metalliferous, chluorine and sulfur rich fluid, warm fluids, warm to hot fluids will transport the metals, but in the right sides, they can also dump them. They can precipitate them and they can precipitate them in the form of sulfide minerals, sulfide ore minerals. And for that one needs what we call a trap site. That means the fluid needs a reason why it should precipitate those ore minerals. Now, this could be a drop in temperature when those fluids that come along faults and they enter a marine basin or a lacustrine basin, it is the cool waters that make a huge difference and the sulfides might precipitate. Another reason could be that they encounter a rock that is providing even more sulfur to produce sulfides and those could be evaporites. But it could also be that they encounter highly reactive rocks like carbonates, limestones and dolomites. And there they can react and they can replace these limestone and these dolomite rocks and form sulfides. And we are finding very, very good signs for that in some of the drill core.